Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Geek Guard's coverage of the Toronto Comic Con. This is the Toronto Comic Con 2016. Is this Toronto Comic Con? This is Toronto Comic Con. I thought 20... I was at home. You know, we really got to get your meds fixed because you're always you. wondering where you are. I've noticed. I, I, I've been lost lately. You've been lost lately. Lately, lately he says. All yeah, right. I'm just saying, give me a map. Then I'll be okay. Yeah, actually, there's one in the program. Oh, there, in what program? For the Toronto Comic Con. Oh, that's where we are. That's where we are. For the, the young fans, does it surprise you that somebody who's, you know, like under 20? Well, what's happening now is that the fans of the show, who are grown up, right. if you will, mm -hmm. if you ever grow up, <laughs> are bringing no. their kids. So the Trekkers who who started with the show 30 years ago now, have, now are old enough to have their own kids. So there is a natural evolution mm -hmm. <laughs> where they're bringing their own kids and making their kids watch the show. Some of the kids roll their eyes and they feel, you feel like they've been dragged here. And some of them, the ones with really good taste, actually respond to Star Trek. But, I mean, to be candid, it's a pretty slow-moving show if you watch. If, if you're a gamer or if you're used to uh, music videos, to watch Star Trek go from close-up to close-up, you know, right. three, four-second cuts, it's a different, you've got to really enjoy the story. We are here with Geekhart's favorite showrunner, oh, Michelle Lavretta, <laughs> currently the showrunner on Killjoys. Uh, you guys are knee deep in. Oh, we're ass deep. Ass deep we're in ass season deep. two. Uh, you guys working on the production there. How has things been going so far? Excellent. Um, we've been having, if possible, even more fun this year. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really great group, and also, you're, it's it's sort of television shows are like a marriage. So you have a blind date your first season, and you're like, we like each other, that's good, huh? Yeah. And then by the time you're in second season, you're like, okay, you, you've really got, it's the honeymoon period is, is either fully in swing or just about to end and get right. into the, the meat of, you know, both in the characters and in the cast working with um, the crew, just a, a really solid marriage. And so it leaves room for lots of, lots of fun. That's fantastic, yeah, because that's the thing with the, the second season. The first season, you're still building the world. Yeah. And I know you're a very big world builder, yeah. so we probably still, there's probably tons of stuff. We've probably seen a tenth yeah. of the things that you have in this world. Um, this is the point now where the characters really get to stretch their legs and really envelop this area. Um, has that been like a really enjoyable, like has the cast really been enjoying getting to find out more about their characters? Yes, yeah, they, they have a lot of fun with it. I have to say that the most enjoyable part of the process for me now, um, particularly on this show, I think for a lot of shows, but particularly this one, is the read through. Mm -hmm. Um, often what happens is they'll have got versions, but we get notes, obviously. Right. And so right until the very end, we're rewriting and changing stuff. But the read-through, they kind of have a real sense of where their characters are going to go. And they're reading it, like, manically before we go in. Usually I see, like, Luke in a corner just going through and reading it. And then in the middle of the read-through, because we hid all these little jokes throughout the action, it is just a nonstop, like, laughter and love fest. Yeah. And um, it's the point where they start to realize where their their character is going to go for that next little leg, and then it's again for the next episode because obviously with only ten you're trying to sort of right. make up some uh, some road there. Totally. Um, so every, every single time they get a new script, they find out a little bit more of where they're going, and they're very excited. You know, what's it like when you look back on it now with the fans that still appreciate it today? They come to the conventions dressed up, they come to talk to you about Johnny Rico and everything that went on with it. What's it like for you? You know, when you look back on that. Well. First of all, Starship Troopers was written by Robert Heinlein in 1958, 59, um, and I, was, I read the book when I was 12. Uh, I went to a military school, I grew up in a military family, so it was a part of my life. And, and, and so when I got the audition for it, I was so excited because I had read that book. Right. Um, and now I was getting an opportunity to play this. It was so cool. Book and movie are totally different, oh, yeah. completely different, yeah. but they're both awesome. Yeah. They're both awesome, um, in my opinion, I, I, you know, and that's just because I'm totally vain. Um, <laughs> Uh, and narcissistic. So no, I just I loved I, I, I loved the I loved the book. But every right. day when I was on the set, I would go oh, thank you. Oh my God, thank you for this uh, this this awesome experience. I'm like out in Casper, Wyoming, right. Casper, Wyoming, filming Starship Troopers, and I'm playing Johnny Rico, and I'm looking around at a thousand extras and the crew and everything, going, this is a, unbelievable. This is amazing. I was so excited to do it, and the fact that it's still popular today, that people still talk about it that it still has that kind of impact or somebody will be yelling on the street Johnny Rico and I'll be like you know what to do um, that is unbelievable to me 